Hey y'all, I've been drinking Coke since I was two years old. I know, I know, but it's one of my favorite drinks, so today I decided to use it as an ingredient in some of my favorite Southern foods. I'm making Coca-Cola barbecue meatball sliders. There is Coke in the meatball itself and in the sauce. It doesn't get more Coke related than that. So this is some ground sirloin and Italian sausage. I love to put Italian sausage in my meatball. It gives a little bit of extra flavor, like when you eat meatballs and you're like, mm, what is that? It's Italian sausage. Panko and Parmesan cheese. Also, if you're making meatballs without Parmesan cheese, you're doing it all wrong. I like to whisk my eggs a little bit before I put them in the meatballs. You don't have to, it's up to you. Salt and pepper and one third cup of Coke. Let the bubbles go down. It's important. Ooh! So you know, <laughs> when you pour it in here, it's like having a nice little chemical reaction and it bubbles and it's amazing. Okay, hands are better because they're not as rough. If you get in a spoon, it really, you can overwork your meat and it makes your meatballs tough and that's the last thing that you want. You just wanna work this enough to get all the ingredients together. My cameraman brought in my um, tray to put the meatballs on. I'm gonna make about 15 to 20 of these meatballs. The thing that I love most about these meatballs, y'all, the first time I had them, I was actually on a yacht. When I was in college, I had the most amazing internship with a lady named Rebecca Lang who is a contributing editor to Southern Living. One day I literally Googled food in Athens, found Rebecca's name and I cold emailed her and I was like, hey, my name's Ivy. Can I please come and just like shadow you for a day? And she's like, actually, I am starting to write a cookbook and I kind of need some help. Do you, would you be interested? And I was like, yes, please sign me up. Long story short, we made Coke slathered wings on my first time with her and then we also made these on the yacht and Coke all around is like a good memory for me. How many is this? This is 16. Recipe says makes 15 to 20. It did, it made 20. Into the oven at 400 for about 25 minutes, which is the perfect amount of time to go ahead and get started on my sauce. It is two cups of Coke, two cups of ketchup. I think it's gonna be this whole bottle. Half a cup of Worcestershire, garlic powder and onion powder. And I'm not telling you the measurements here because I promise we linked the recipe in the description. This is a quarter cup of light brown sugar, half a teaspoon of pepper. Invest in a pepper grinder. Y'all, the stuff that comes pre-ground, throw it away. It has been ground for I think six years and sits in a warehouse and it doesn't even taste like pepper. I'm waving a knife around because I'm so enthusiastic about this. Lemon juice hack. Use your fingers as a strainer. This sauce will take about the same amount of time that it takes to cook my meatballs. It'll get saucy and glossy and thick, and then I'll simmer my meatballs in it while I make a Coke and peanuts pie. I'm just gonna let that sink in for a second. Let's check out these meatballs. Oh my gosh, look at these, they're so brown. And you can see the cheese melting out, which seriously is the best part, other than the Coke, obviously. I'm gonna let these simmer in the sauce while I get started on making my Coke flavored dessert. I am getting started on this Coke and peanuts pie. We are taking the Coca-Cola chocolate icing that everyone knows and loves and putting it on the peanuts pie. That was one and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, dry roasted salted peanuts, brown sugar, when recipes say pulse, it kind of annoys me. I just like to let it go. This should be your go-to crust for anything peanut butter, peanut related ever in your whole life. About two tablespoons of peanut butter. So you wanna let this run until it becomes pea-sized. Okay, it's looking pea-sized. Now I'm going to put in ice cold water. This is very important in pie making, measure with your tablespoon, but don't get any ice in there. This dough is a little bit wet, so you just heavily flour your surface. Roll it a little in your flour and flatten it into a disc. 
and then you wanna chill it for about two hours. I actually already have one that is chilled. And now I just have to roll it out and place it in my pie dish. If you put it between two pieces of parchment paper, it helps prevent it from sticking. I'm gonna <laughs> press on our dough. You might have to keep moving your parchment paper. Keep turning your dough. Moment of truth to see how round my pie is. I did pretty good. Use your parchment paper to kind of lift it up and flop it in. Peel it back. Look at that! I'm gonna get some scissors and trim the edges and then we'll crimp the crust so it's beautiful when it comes out of the oven. I love cutting things. Okay, this is how you crimp a pie crust. Take your crab pinchers and your index finger and then you wanna indent it and kind of push it around. It's so easy. Side note completely on this whole Coke and Peanuts thing, let's take a moment and talk about basil. I just had this thought. I would actually take these leftover scraps that I just cut off the side, and I'm gonna roll them out and cut them and make little cookies. Y'all, peanut butter treats for basil. She's gonna love it. Look at this pretty pie dough, y'all. While I get my filling together, I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge. The recipe doesn't really call to do that, but just go ahead and do it anyway. You really want your dough to stay as cold as it can be. This is what I like to call Georgia peanut pie, which is basically like pecan pie, but it has peanuts. I'm starting with some brown sugar and melted butter, three eggs. Woo, that's loud. A third cup of evaporated milk. Okay, sticky ingredient trick. Pam. I love sorghum. It's such a Southern ingredient about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and some flour to thicken it all up, salt, and half a cup of peanut butter. My love for Coke actually started at a very, very young age, probably younger than should be allowed. My Nana walks around all the time with a jug of Coke in her hand, and when I was two, possibly even younger, if I was ever feeling down or, you know, just wanted some Coke, she would always give it to me. It smells so good. I love to put peanut butter on my waffles and this smell reminds me of that. If you shake your bowl a little bit, it kind of helps incorporate your ingredients and you get a good like arm workout and little dance action going on. There we go. Okay, I got my crust out of the fridge and now I'm going to pour in this ooey gooey peanut butter filling. Yum! And then you wanna top it with your peanuts. Sprinkle, don't pour. Pouring will just get you nowhere. While it's baking, I'm going to work on a Coke chocolate sauce. And it's gonna be divine. I'm cracking open Coke bottle, I think number six of the day. But you know, there are worse things to crack open, like your skull. A third cup of Coke, cocoa powder, because Coke and chocolate, y'all, mm. a whole stick of butter, the good stuff, about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and powdered sugar. Send prayers up for me being able to get this powdered sugar into this pot without making a mess. Once the butter is melted, you'll be able to stir this up, and then we can pour it on our peanut pie. The Coke that I used today may not have been out of my Nana's jug, but it did make for an amazing Coke themed meal with these Coke meatballs and Coke and peanuts pie. If you like what you saw today and want me to do more themed things on Hey Y'all, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you're watching on YouTube, you know what to do, click the bell. We'll see you next time on Hey Y'all.